The question is, did she go too far? Can you go back to what you were doing last week? So to see a good one, I'm like, thank God. Hello my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Girl, if you're new here or if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Today we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race France Season 3, Episode 4, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had the fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is Night of a Thousand Celine Dion's. That is right, the queens this week must give us their best Celine Dion look. Now, before we get started, let me just say, didn't we already see this challenge back in Canada's Drag Race where they also did a Night of a Thousand Celine Dion's? I'm like just thinking to myself, didn't you have another celebrity to choose? Maybe a French celebrity? I don't know, just a thought. But enough about my rant, let's get into these looks and find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Misty Phoenix, and Misty Phoenix is coming out as Celine Dion in the Met Gala, specifically the Camp Met Gala. Now, fun fact about the Camp Met Gala, none of the celebrities actually knew what camp was, so I found it hysterical that that was the theme that year because, girl, what was going on? None of the looks were actually camp. But enough about the Met Gala, let's get into Misty's look. Misty decides to come out with like this gold interpretation to what Celine did, because Celine did do a silver look. I think the overall vibe definitely reads what Celine was giving. Uh, it's got the big flowy dress, it's got the headpiece. So they are resembling each other. And I like that she went with a Celine Dion that was a little bit later in life when Celine was starting to become a little bit more of a fashion icon. Because some of Celine's looks in general are kind of pedestrian so it's really hard to camp them up and make them more drag. Going for a Matt Gala look is as camp as you're gonna get especially when the theme is camp. I will say that overall this fits the flow and is good but it's not great. If I did want to switch a few things I would add a lot more fringe. I think she could have used double the amount of fringe onto this dress to really give you the same vibe as Celine's. Also the headpiece I think you could have gone bigger with the headpiece. I mean first of all it's Celine Dion Met Gala. Second of all this is drag. You could go bigger better. It doesn't have have to be a literal interpretation it's got to be a draggy interpretation all in all despite those little things here and there it is still a great look and definitely gonna be a bop. next up we have le philippe and le philippe is giving us Celine Dion at her wedding day. She's coming out wearing this white wedding dress with this headpiece. But unlike Celine Dion, she decided to take a little bit of fashion interpretation and bring it to a little bit of a modern twist to it. Celine Dion in her original look had a lot of lace detailing and had this headpiece that was like sort of stuck to her head. Le Philippe decided to reinterpret this, make it a little bit more drag by making this headpiece that's a little bit more open, a little bit more modern. And the wedding dress herself, she decided to go and make it out of a PVC material as opposed to making it out of this lace detailing. Now, I love when people like switch it up and do their own twists on something because like I said, we don't necessarily want a recreation. We want an interpretation. And this definitely is an interpretation. The question is, did she go too far? And in my opinion, maybe. The reason why I think she might've went too far is how much of this dress is really Celine Dion's dress? She removed all the lace, and so therefore it doesn't have the lace detailing. She removed the puffy shoulders, so therefore it doesn't have the puffy shoulders. She decided to add these like bell sleeves, which Celine's didn't have. So now it's just feeling like a wedding dress, not Celine's wedding dress. I wish that there was a little bit more correlation between the two so we can connect it back to the theme of the runway. I almost get a feeling that she probably had a wedding dress in her wardrobe already, and therefore just used that and reused it and made it bigger better for this runway because it just feels like too far off that being said does she look good yes she does did you understand that she was doing Celine's wedding yes you were so I can't really fault her that much unless you're a huge Celine fan or if you were there comparing the two like I am I don't know that you would necessarily have known these things I like the modern interpretation I like the look overall and Le Philippe looks great so that's why I'm still gonna go ahead and give her a Bye. 
up, it's Noch Ma Belle. And Noch Ma Belle is coming out wearing this gray bolero with this white shirt, this brown hair, these sparkly black pants, and this giant bow tie. And Noch Ma Belle goes on to explain that she is giving you young Celine Dion. Now, the part that I don't like is that the show did not show you what the reference photo was. And since the show didn't show you what the reference photo was, I decided to go look at it and try to find out. And I will say this was the hardest one to find. I was like, what is she trying to channel? Then I found it. This is actually a school photo of Celine Dion. And that's when I was like, oh, that's why I couldn't find it. Because even though she said young Celine, I thought a little bit older than this. And actually, once I saw this picture, I liked the outfit a little bit better. Because my original thought when she came out was, okay, she took a basic everyday outfit and dragged it up a little bit. She took pants, she made them sparkly, she took a bow tie, and she made it a little bit oversized to make it a little bit more drag. It was cute, it was nothing special. But then when I found out that she was actually taking a school photo and reinterpreted it, I was like, oh, that's actually quite special. Because when you think of Celine Dion, you don't think of a kid's uniform, you think of the superstar that is Celine Dion. So the fact that she went all the way back took this picture where you don't even see the full outfit, and then after that interpreted and made it fashion, I was like, oh, this is actually cool. But had I not done this research for this video, I think I would have liked it a little bit less. And I think that that's exactly what happened here for the judges. They probably didn't necessarily know it, so you rate it with what you see. And that's how most people will rate drag, is they don't necessarily know all the references, but they will rate it on like, is it cool, is it not cool? What am I looking at from a, uh, non-research point of view, I think it was good enough. Once I did the research, I think it was even better. Ultimately, if you had a guess, it's definitely going to be a oh. Next up, it's Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is coming out wearing the backwards white suit with the little fedora hat. Once you think of iconic Celine Dion fashion, this is definitely the first thing that comes to my mind, and this is the one that I think I might have done. This was such a moment at the time, but it's also just so original, so unique, and so Celine Dion that I knew for sure one queen was gonna do this look. That's why I said this is probably the one I would have probably went for, but then probably would have had a second guess because I would have said, mm, someone else will probably do it, so let me go and try to find a different, more original take. But it turns out only one queen did this look, and the queen that did it was Ruby on the Nail, and not only did she do it, she did it really well. First off, I was surprised that Ruby on the Nail was gonna do this look, because this is a little bit more of a, you know, tougher, cooler version of Celine, and Ruby on the Nail isn't that cooler chick, she's more of like that old school gal, so I probably would have saw her in a different Celine look. That being said, she did this look really well. You can see that this is not just like a suit she bought and then put on backwards. This really feels tailored to her body because it fits her perfectly. When she walks down, it doesn't feel like a jacket closed up. It feels like it was draped onto her body. So maybe she did buy it and then got it super tailored. Or what I actually think she did is she got it custom made because this fits so well and looks so clean. She even topped it with the hat, the glasses, all of it. It all works together. And I just want to say brava. This is a look that many people have done and I've seen very many bad versions of it. So to see a good one, I'm like, thank God. Thank God someone did this look justice. Not only did she take an iconic look, but she did it well. And because she did it well, she is definitely going to get a pop. Next up, it's Perseo, and Perseo is giving you Celine Dion from I'm Alive. Now, Celine Dion in the I'm Alive music video is wearing this sort of silver dress, which Perseo is also wearing. But in Celine Dion's music video, there is this little kid playing with a remote control airplane. So Perseo's got the remote control and the plane on her head to reference the whole video. I like that Perseo decided to go in this direction and not only give you the dress, which could have been really simple from a fashion point of view, but decided to camp it up by putting this plane on her head and really going for it. But the real question is, did it land? And I'm not too sure. I will say that I like that Paseo went for it, decided to give you a whole vibe, decided to really do something different, especially for Paseo, because every week Paseo is coming out with this Grand Canaria drag. And although it's amazing, I'm always like, I want more. So I'm glad that she decided to give you something completely different. But now that she gave us something completely different, I'm like, can you go 
back to what you were doing last week. And that is so horrible for me to say, but it's true. When you see this drag comparative to the regular stuff that Perseo does, this does not compare. Perseo's other stuff is just so much better. This feels like first time in drag. I know, I know. And I think the reason why it feels a little bit first time in drag, even though the outfit is quite camp and cute, is really the wig and the makeup. She's just not wearing it. It's all wearing her. The wig feels flat. It feels really not Perseo and really not well done. So I guess it's one of those things that sometimes it's better you don't wish for certain things to happen because they might not end up as they are and that's what this is giving me. I applaud her for trying, I applaud her for going in this direction. If I was her I would have done the same thing because you gotta have to show up different silhouettes and she knew that comment was coming and she prepared this look for that. I don't think it's very successful and I don't think it's at her level that she's always at and it's for those reasons I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. Next up, it's Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out as Celine Dion in her wedding. That is right, she is also giving you a wedding dress. She's coming out in the full wedding dress with the full headpiece. But unlike Le Philippe, Leona Winter is doing it more accurate to the original description. She's coming out with this fully detailed bodice detail with the big puffy sleeves and the headpiece that is more accurate to what Celine Dion was giving. Now, this is really interesting for me because when you have two people that are coming out in the same look, you have no choice but to compare them. Even though you don't want to, you kind of do. And this is very much one of those situations. It's funny because when I saw Le Philips, I was complaining about how I didn't feel it was accurate enough to Celine Dion and she took too many liberties. On the other hand, you have Leona Winter who took very limited liberties and actually stuck to Celine Dion. So they really did two completely different interpretations to each other. The thing is, which do I like better? And in my opinion, I like Le Philips better. It just looks like a much better put together outfit, though Leona Winters looks more like a Celine Dion wedding dress, which is a little bit camp and cheesy and 80s. So it's kind of like a give and take here, you know what I mean? Which is a little bit funny to me because what I was complaining about one, the other was giving, and once the other one gave it to me, I now prefer the original. And yet again, one of those things you might regret what you wish for. All in all, it's still a very cute dress. It's got a lot of work put in together. It looks really well. It does what it needs to do, and because it does what it needs to do and you can see effort was put in it is definitely gonna be a bum. Next up, it's Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out with this like gold dress and this little marionette and this sort of like veil covered her face. I originally didn't know what she was channeling. She goes on to explain that she is channeling Celine Dion from the Pour Que Tu M'Aimes Encore music video. Now, I actually did not know this video, so I had to look it up and I was like, oh, this is an interesting take because the original dress is really simple and sort of like, basic, you know what I mean? So she went from a really basic interpretation and then had to level it up. But looking at the music video, it's a little bit like somber and creepy, which is very much Lulu Straga's vibe. So I understand where she went with this direction and it made sense because you always want to try to find something that is in your character. This music video definitely felt like something that Lulu Straga would pull inspiration from and obviously she did. I will say that Lulu Straga definitely did a number on this in terms of like redoing it to make it more fashion to make it more uh, uh, suitable for the runway. She just had a hard material to start with. I think that when you are picking an outfit for a theme of a thousands of a night, whoever, you should always go for a little bit of a louder outfit because there's usually a lot to do. When you start from a quiet outfit, there's only so far you can go and that's what happened here. There's only so far she can go. She made the most of it and really made it a fashion moment and that's what I really appreciate from somebody like Lulu Strega is that she will take it there. Had I not seen the video, I probably would have been less enthusiastic about this look, but having watched the music video, having seen the original material, I'm much more enthusiastic about it. And I'm like, it definitely works and it definitely works well. All in all, it's a great shout and definitely gonna be a bum. And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I wasn't really sure because going into it, I was like, we've already seen a night of a thousand Celine Dion's done by Canada's Drag Race. What are these queens really gonna be doing differently? And honestly, a lot. I think that this definitely feels fresher. These queens definitely felt 
more talented. I think that when it was done on Canada's Drag Race, it was good, but not that memorable. I think that the Drag Race France girls, they know their fashion, they know what's going on. I liked a lot of these interpretations and I'm actually glad that they brought back this challenge, especially in a different season where they might not know each other's references. I think it was a strong runway overall. But you're probably wondering, who had the worst? Well, let's talk about it. So who had my Drab of the Week? Well, my Drab of the Week this week goes to... Perseo. Honestly, all the runways were really strong. Perseo's runway wasn't even that bad, to be honest. I only drabbed it because I just didn't feel like it was up to Perseo's level. And it was the only one I drabbed this week. So of course she has the drab of the week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week goes to... Ruby on the nail! I know, I was a little bit surprised that Ruby was coming out with these things. Ruby is a silent assassin. A few of these runways, you don't expect her to do well, and then she comes out with these looks, and I'm like, uh-huh. And this was definitely one of them. She took, I think, like I said, the most iconic look, and I think the hardest because it is so iconic, and then did an excellent job at it. Overall, I thought this was very well done. thought she looked great, and if she was in the bottom, I think this outfit would have saved her, in my opinion. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, and let me know who you thought had the best and worst looks. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them. That is it for this week's episode. Can you go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so? I am really struggling to get new subscribers and that means you. So please go ahead and hit subscribe. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.